Hiya, good morning. Hiya. Yes, um, I have, before I joined KFAC, I have had um, <clears throat> years of problems with weight. Um, could, get, could get some weight off, but always came back on again. I would say I've ever did keto, but I did low fat and um, counting the carbs and calories and diets and gyms and exercise I love to do. I don't mind exercising, um, but it continued, my weight continued to increase to a point where I actually started to notice that my skin changes, different legs were starting to swell, arms were swelling, pain touching my legs would have been really bad. And I mean, literally like touch it, putting a fingerprint on your arm or leg would have reduced me to tears. Um, also could feel that I had like, when you put your hands on your legs, you could feel like lumps, like tiny, I would describe must be hard peas, but the lumps under your legs. But I was saying to my GP about what was going on with me and he wasn't listening at all. To what I had to say. He basically was oh, stop eating what you're eating and you must be eating too much of the healthy foods. And I got to the stage where I just gave up talking to him and switched doctors. Went to a new GP and told him, showed him my legs, which were huge, quite swollen, ankles swollen, the pain in my feet, the pain in my toes was just horrendous and this has been going on for donkey shares. I actually remember my last child, 14 years of age, he is now almost 15, asking my husband, how am I going down the stairs carrying him? I had to go down on my bum one star at him. The pain was that bad. So he sent me off, the new doctor sent me off to the lymphedema clinic to let them have a look at me. And the girl in the lymphedema clinic was fabulous. And she... Um, had a look at my legs and said, you have lymphedema. Lymphedema is swelling in the leg, arm, or other parts of the body due to the body's inability to effectively remove lymph fluid, which contains proteins, fatty acids, waste from cell feeding, and bacteria that enter the body. You may have heard that your body is 60% water, but have you ever wondered where all that water is? You might think it's in your blood because blood is liquid, contained inside your arteries and veins. But actually, your blood only contains a small fraction of the water in your body. Many of the structures in your body, like your internal organs, your skin, your eyes, are made up of cells. And most of the water in your body is either inside those cells or around them. Now, the body does a good job of keeping the amount of fluid inside the cells at a constant level. But the amount around your cells can actually change and your veins and your lymphatic system work in concert to remove excess fluid from the tissues if it builds up. But if there's impairment to either of these systems, fluid can build up in this extracellular space. And in particular, if you have impairment to your lymphatic system, the excessive fluid that builds up leads to chronic swelling known as lymphedema. Now to understand how and why this buildup happens, we need to talk about your circulatory system your heart, your arteries, veins, and lymphatics. When your heart beats, it contracts, and that creates a high pressure in the arteries, which are the vessels carrying oxygen-rich blood throughout the body. Now, since your arteries are made of cells, the high pressure can actually push the smaller components of your blood, like fluid, out through the spaces between the cells. Now, if this were the whole story, we would have a problem, because fluid would leak out of your arteries, and it would accumulate and too much accumulation leads to what we call edema or swelling. But our bodies are amazing, and to prevent this fluid buildup from happening, the body has developed a transport system called the lymphatic system to help maintain fluid balance. And this lymphatic system consists of lymph capillaries, which are located just below your skin. And these lymph capillaries are almost everywhere in your body and pick up the extra fluid. The capillaries join together into larger lymphatic vessels, and those vessels merge into even bigger ones until ultimately they return the lymphatic fluid to the circulatory system in the large veins near your heart. And I went, right, okay. I was sort of relieved to a certain extent, not to say, yes, I've got something wrong with me, because up to that point, no one, no medical doctor, no, nobody had ever said there was anything wrong with me. But 
not just to go, this is not in my head. This is not in my, there is something going on here. So she then went on to say to me that um, we can we can tell whether you've got lymphedema in 10 seconds flat by a simple test that you can do, which I never knew about. And she said, if you can't pinch the skin at the base of your second toe, not your big toe, and your, your second one, be it pinch it, it's called a positive stammer shine. You have lymphedema. And stemmer sign is when we go on the dorsum of the second toe, and between our thumb and our index finger, we see if we can pinch the skin, and I can. So that is a negative stemmer sign, and here we see the pinching of the skin, and so this is negative, so we have not gone on to lymphedema. Okay. Oh, I've got it. So she went through my medical history and um, with me, and it came across that it was primary lymphedema, not secondary. There are two types of lymphedema primary lymphedema and secondary lymphedema. Primary lymphedema can happen when the formation of the lymph vessels during maturation as a preborn baby was less than adequate. Primary lymphedema is much more common in women and occurs most often in the legs. Secondary lymphedema has two causes. The first is obstruction or blockage of lymph fluid movement in the lymph vessels or nodes. The first cause of secondary lymphedema occurs when there is damage to the normally formed lymph channels and lymph nodes. This damage can take place during surgery, from infection, from radiation treatment, or other causes. Okay, treatment for that was compression bandages for six weeks in the hospital. I'm going twice a week to get them changed over and then compression tights for it for forever. Um, she then asked me, would I, would, would I, have I ever, so the treatment started anyway, and they were measuring my legs the whole way, um, marking them and measuring them, and they were reducing, they definitely were reducing, and the pain was becoming a bit less. Um, I was still following a normal diet. I was still trying to watch what I was eating, low fat, um, that healthy that I thought was help and it's still I have a lot of psoriasis as well elbows and different parts of my body which were flaring up big time um, so that was okay she then asked me if I ever had a scan done for my um, lymphedema to have a look at the lymphatic system I feel I've never had one done so I got a scan done it injected dye into my feet and I had scanned my legs and then a half an hour later, they were scanned them again. And then I came back three hours later and they scanned them again. And at that point, I was diagnosed with mesodema, M-Y-X-E-O-D-E-M-A, which they described to be sugar under the skin, which looked like sugar molecules under the skin. That's what they described it as to me. And still no treat. And that, that would, have, would have been known as a thyroid problem, although my thyroid buds were always fine. Um, the doctor then um, gave me thyroxine for to see if that would help. Levothyroxine to see if that would help, but it made me feel a lot worse. So I was left again on my own. Nobody tell me what to do, what to do. I'm trying to do a bit of research myself. My youngest son, about nine years of age, had developed the same thing, symptoms as me and was going exactly the same way as I was going. Um, and still no explanation. And then I came across the shelves um, traveling with keto, keto diet. I actually um, pray on quite a bit, pray on quite a bit for answers and in, in, a terrible, in a terrible place. Now, I've only joined six weeks ago, um, but I took on board what you were saying when I watched the YouTube video. I took on board and I said to myself, you know, if this, thickness under my skin this thick I, if keto is going to take me and burn the fat that I, that I have which was one of my problems I kept saying to my doctor it's like I eat calories but I don't burn them and my body's not burning what I'm eating I'm storing everything I'm not burning anything the weight's going on and on and on but so um it was keto so I then stated to start um, keto with yourself and um, loofah, local loofah, local loofah. Yeah, I, I think it's important if I can just say this that the ketogenic diet per se, as it's um, shown out there, and I'll just pop it up now with the pie chart with seventy percent fat that you add to your yeah. meals, 
and the 20% um, protein and the 10% carbohydrates are based upon the calorific value of the foods, which is totally useless because our bodies don't understand what calories are and our body hasn't got a home hormone for identifying them or for dealing with them. So it's a useless way of measuring and um, understanding the contents of your meal. So you're right in what you say. We don't do keto. What we do is loca lofa, which is low carbohydrate, low fat. Sorry about that. Oh, that's quite okay. That's quite okay. Yeah. So, um, so I decided. Yeah, I I literally, not that I didn't. I didn't believe that it would work, but I thought to myself, if this is burning the fat, then obviously I, in my mind that what they seen in the scan, this mesodema under my skin would go as well. It's the only way. I mean, I've been, this has been diagnosed with me for years. I've had this for mesodema about two, two, three years diagnosed, lymphedema a lot longer. Um, so, and exercise and all the rest, it was not shifting at all. So six weeks into this watching, and I know I understand low fat, but I understand what you mean. Not adding the fat, not adding the cream, not adding the extra calories into your meals. So took it about turned to calorie, turned to local low fat, as in proper meals. Took away the carbs, keeping them between. My carb count took about twenty grams, maybe ten grams, fifteen grams, fifteen grams a day. But we do carbs very much other than in my salad and stuff. But I try and keep it quite small. And in six weeks, I've almost 20 pounds off in weight without changing too much, <laughs> without changing really how you eat and what you eat. Um, it, it surprised me quite a bit traveling to see that carbohydrates isn't everything. It's hidden sugar. I would never, someone had said to me, you have a sugar problem. I would have said, no, I don't. I don't even add sugar to cornflakes. <laughs> I don't add sugar to carpet. I don't add sugar to tea. I have not got a sugar problem, but I did because my whole diet consisted of pasta, rice, sugar, cornflakes, bread. It consisted of all the things that was making me unwell, basically really, really unwell. Um, and from I've changed over to local loafa, I have noticed things like when I get up in the morning, I can walk down the stairs without one at a time. My psoriasis on my elbows is healing, fabulous. My skin doesn't feel as sore to touch. Six weeks, it's total turnaround. Um, do I have lymphedema? Well, I can now pinch the skin in the base of my toes, so maybe I haven't got lymphedema anywhere. But um, I don't know. I just feel better within myself, and I'm so glad that I've found a way that I can live a life that's going to make me healthier. Wow. Did, did you realise when, when they explained, uh, spoke to you about your lymphatic system, did you understand that the lymphatic system transports the fat as triglycerides um, into your bloodstream? That's the way that they enter the bloodstream. Did you understand that? Did they explain no, to you that that was... They, they didn't really explain too mm. much when it comes to lymphedema. It was like, um, you have lymphedema and we're going to treat you this way, but did they explain as to what it was? No. Factor one, the, the lymphatic system is responsible for the delivery of fats from the small intestine into the bloodstream. And if you're eating a lot of, of fat, this can increase the load on the lymphatic system um, because it's simply more, that, more fat that has to be carried. And you can minimize this by by not eating too much fat, eating more of the short and medium chain fats, which are not processed through the lymphatic system. They're d absorbed directly through the wall of the small intestine. And then the number two factor is, is fatty liver disease uh, and, and other forms of li liver disease. Obesity and fatty liver disease are very, very highly con correlated. Every, almost everyone who is obese has some degree of fatty liver disease. The liver produces half of the lymph in the body when it's healthy, but if the liver gets unhealthy, the lymph output goes up, and it can go up to as much as six to ten times normal 
which is just flooding the central lymphatic system. It can lead to swelling. It also, when you have fatty liver disease, it leads to muscle weakness. It makes it harder to exercise. It, you actually have less energy, less ability to, to move. And it, of course, feeds into gut dysbiosis and, and other issues. And the, one of the key drivers of fatty liver disease is fructose. And fructose is, um, as I'll explain, is, is a form of sugar and it is metabolized differently and it goes to the liver and it gets converted into fat. So the corrective changes are minimizing the fats, uh, increasing choline from, uh, from your green leafy vegetables, eggs, seafood, and omega-3 fats, which are an important factor in liver health. And many people have gotten away from, from eating eggs and eating other things that are, so they're not getting enough choline to help keep the, the liver happy. And then of course, um, inulin fiber, as ex I'm not gonna talk about that much detail today, but it's explained in the book, is a key factor in keeping the, the gut and the liver happy. Even though I'm not medically trained and I'm not a doctor, if we cut down on the fact that we're eating, then we're not gonna be trying to push it through our lymphatic system. And if we cut down on the carbohydrates, that should reduce our inflammation and give the lymphatic system a chance to heal. Um, and so from what you've said, and we never had this conversation before this morning, yeah. you said that you feel much better and you can now touch your skin. And wow, yeah. I'm, just so, I'm just so amazed. And I'm really, really motivated to find out more about this. And I, take the, I just want to thank you for sharing this with us. Thank you. Not a problem, Trevor. Not a problem. If I can help anybody at all, um, it has been an absolute another nightmare, night, total nightmare from start to finish. As there were, um, how unwell, how unwell I have actually felt at one stage, and how well I feel now. Um, and as I say, every day, every day is a learning day, a learning curve. And when you meet people like yourself that has so much information and has been on the road, has been there and done it. Um, well done. Thank you very much for all your time and all your help. You're very welcome. And I want to thank you again for sharing your success with us. Just out of interest, you say in six weeks, can I ask you how much weight you've lost in six weeks by sticking to the local alpha diet, please? I was 183 pounds when I started and I'm now 164.6. Times wow. this morning. So, so yeah, about near 20, coming up to 20 pounds. So, 20 so, pounds, well, okay. Delighted, That's... absolutely delighted with what I am doing. Um, love, loving it, and it's, it's a new way of life for me. You know, it's just. You were telling me that that your family's in, involved and that your son's lost yeah. weight and that your my husband's son, lost my weight. My son, who's got the lymphedema as well. He started. He started it behind us, but my husband sort of did it. He well, he started it before I even know he was doing art, but I do all the cooking. So um, he was sort. Of, so the, the the dinners were coming in minus the chips and minus the potatoes, but he didn't notice for a few days because I had sort of put like cauliflower and broccoli, and and he, and he didn't sort of notice that. that and then I had said what I was doing. He seen me buzzing, lost seven pound in the first week, and going, "This is great! I'm loving this. This is brilliant." But it's not even now. As the, yes, the weight coming off is still is brilliant. It's the bonus. But it's the whole way. I mean, I went yesterday with a salad the whole day. Didn't feel hungry. You know, nice saying that it was a good salad. It was a really good salad. But and I ate till I actually didn't feel hungry anymore. But that was me the rest of the day. I didn't eat at all. And I still haven't. I'm busy making a cottage pie at the moment with celeric. Um, so I'm looking at the moment, but I don't feel hungry. And that's the fascinating part is I can go longer without food and I feel absolutely fine. I don't, it isn't I'm starving myself or I need to eat, I'm hungry. I don't feel hungry, which is absolutely amazing. So the less food you put in your body, the less work your body has to do and the more chance it has to heal, which is exactly what my body needed. Well, thank you so much, Jeanette, for sharing this story with us. And I just wish you all the best and we'll stay in touch and keep keep doing what you're doing. Stick to the local offer diet and uh, we'll catch up on our Zoom support group meetings um, on Wednesday mornings. It's really, really good that you join us. Thank you very, very thank much. You, Thanks you're a lot. Bye. Bye-bye, Father.
Hi, just hope that you enjoy these small videos that we put together for you. If you do, then don't forget to join us on the Warrington Low Carbohydrate Group on YouTube. Just ring the bell, just subscribe. And also, if you want to find out more about how we're fighting the war against losing weight and type 2 diabetes and other health issues, join us. Join us on the Keep Fat Club. So thanks a lot again for watching this video. Stay safe. Bye now.